Welcome back to another contract video and in this video we're going to be looking at a really simple mechanic on how to click on an object, drag back and then fire it at a certain velocity. This is perfect for games like Angry Birds or Golf. So let's get started. So to start off with, I've just gave myself a quick template. So I've changed the background. I've had a little bit of terrain and a bull, but nothing too exciting. So the next thing we're going to add to this is I'm just going to scroll down, grab a new sprite. I'm going to start by creating something called a leash. And as we pull back on the bull, this is what is going to appear. This line is going to appear to tell us how far we're pulling back, how much pressure we're putting on this bull. In terms of what we need to do with this, it doesn't matter what color it is, because we're going to change that later. We need to change the origin point to be to the far left and then we need to add a second point and that's going to be on the far right and then just hit the X button. In terms of shape, shrink it right down until it's a small square and that's all we need to do with it for now. Next thing I'm going to add another object and this is going to be another sprite and this one's going to be called the pull point and this is what we're grabbing onto and dragging across the screen as we pull this line back to show how much pressure we're going to put on the ball. And this is literally just a placeholder image as this is going to be invisible inside our code. So just crop it down and hit the X and then finally shrink it down a little bit to the size of the hitbox that you want. So if I put it just here above my ball, anytime I put my mouse on this hitbox, I can pull back on the ball. If you want to allow the player to click from a large distance, we can have it like that. So if their mouse is anywhere in this hitbox as they're holding down, they'll be able to drag the ball and fire it. Now I've got those two objects in place, we can start adding some of our behaviors that we need. So we're gonna start with our pull points and we're just gonna edit the behaviors. And this one's gonna be nice and simple. It's gonna be the drag and drop behavior. Next, we're gonna go to our ground and we're going to edit the behaviors. And this one's gonna be the physics behavior. Now the physics behavior is really important as any objects that have got the physics behavior on will interact with each other, which means our ball will hit the ceiling and it will bounce off and it will calculate how much it's bouncing by. Most important thing with your ground is just tick this immovable object on so it doesn't have gravity, it doesn't fall. Then for our ball, we just need one behavior as well, and this is also going to be the physics behavior. The only difference with this one is we're not going to click on that immovable tag. Now this is everything set up on this side, we can then move to the event sheet. So the first thing that we're going to do is the main pullback mechanic, and then we'll start looking at how we can refine that to make it look even better. So I'm gonna start by adding an event, and we're gonna start with a system event and every tick. We're gonna take our leash to begin with, and once it's set angle towards position, I'm gonna start by setting it towards the pull points dot X and the pull point dot Y. Once we've got the leash facing that way, we also want to set the leash's position. This is going to be bull.x and bull.y. So it starts at the bull, but it faces towards the pull point. Just as a little bit of tidying up as well, we're just gonna take our bull and we're just going to move it to the top. So it's always on top of everything else. And then we're just gonna take our leash, scroll down, and we're going to move to object and we want it to be moved to our ball, but we want it just behind our ball. So a little bit of ordering on how these objects appear on the screen. Now we get to the clever bit. We're going to go to system and we're going to compare two values. Now we're going to use a really clever function called distance. And inside the brackets, what we're going to do is we're going to take the pull point. We're going to take the X position. So make sure you do dot X, then pull point dot Y and then another comma, and then we do the bull.x and the bull.y. It's gonna work out the distance between those two objects. So as we pull the pull point back, how far away is it from our bull? Now we're gonna check if it is less than or equal to, and for now I'm just gonna put 100. This is gonna control how far back we can pull that lead. Obviously if you want it so you can pull it really, really far back, you'll just make that number bigger. If you want it so you can only use it in a small distance, then you'd make that number smaller. Once we've got that, we're actually gonna go back onto here and just copy and paste that line of code. And we're gonna add an action. We're gonna take our leash, scroll down, and set the width. And the width is gonna be the same number, so the distance between the pull point and the ball. If for any reason we go over this number, we're just gonna right click on the edge here and add an else statement. 
Now for this we want to actually stop them from pulling the pull point any further because they've gone beyond the range that we've allowed. So all we're going to do is take the pull point and we're going to set the position and we're going to take our leash and then we're going to take image point X and then inside the brackets put one. So this is the other side of the leash that we set up. And we're just going to do the same for Y. So leash dot image point Y and position number one. Now, final couple of things that we have to do before we can actually test this is we're going to add an event and we're just going to say pull point and we're going to is dragging. We're just going to invert that to say, are we not dragging it at the moment? If so, all we're going to do is take our pull point, scroll down and set the position. I'm going to set it back to the bull so it always returns to the bull's X and Y position. I'm going to add one final bit of code and all we're going to do is do the pull point and just check if it is dragging this time. So no inversion on this one. And if it is, we're going to take our leash and set it to visible. On the flip side of that, we're going to take our leash if we're not dragging it and just set it invisible. Now we've done quite a lot there. So let's do a test. So now if we do our test, we've got our pull point here, which we're going to make invisible in just a second. But you can see that the leash is changing in size no matter where our mouse is, but we have got a max range on where we can go. So at the moment, this ain't very long, but if I pull it all the way far back, this would be max power, then medium power, and then a small amount of power. So next we're going to take that pull. So next we're going to take that pull point and we're just going to make it invisible. And then we're going to actually go back to our lead and we're just going to edit the animations. Now we've got animation one, we're going to leave that as it is, and then we're going to duplicate it. I'm going to create some different colors. So I'm going to start with green being if we've got a small amount of power. And what I'm going to do is just rename this to low. I'm going to do the same for a medium option, which would be set to orange and then a high power set to red. Now I've got that, I'm just going to hit the X and I'm going to go back to my event sheet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add an event and I'm just going to check the length of the lead at any given time. So compare width and I'm going to check first of all if it is less than or equal to and this out of 100 that I've set mine to. Again, if you make that number bigger, your lead will be longer. Let's just say if it's less than 40. All I'm going to do is take the leash and set the animation. And I'm going to choose the animation for low. And I'm going to add another event and check the leash once again. And this time I'm going to see if it is greater than or equal to 40. And then maybe less than 60. So I'm just going to copy and paste that and check less than or equal to, uh, let's go 70 actually. And then we'll do over 70 being our high value. So I'm just going to copy and paste this line of code here and just change that to mid. And then finally, we're going to repeat this once more, but this time we'll do over 70. So you can see that what we're doing here is changing the color of our lead, changing the animation, depending on how far back we're pulling it to give us a color of green, orange, or red. Really, really simple way of doing this. There are some other ways you could approach this, but I like this method because it is really, really simple. So if we test it once more, You'll see our pull points invisible this time. However, when we pull our lead, we get the different colors that we're able to move around so we can see how much power we're putting on the bull. So now we need to look at actually firing this bull. So I'm going to add an event. I'm going to take my pull point. I'm just going to scroll down and check when I've dropped it. Now to make sure that we get the same result each time, we're just going to take our bull and if it's moving ever so slightly, we're just going to set the velocity to zero to stop it moving. Now that it's stopped moving, we can actually fire it. So we're going to go down to bull and we're going to scroll down and we're going to apply force at an angle. Now the particular force that we want to apply is going to use our same formula that we've done before. So this is distance and then pull point dot x comma pull point dot y comma and then bull dot x bull dot y. And this just is taking the distance between where the pull point is and where the ball is and using that to work out the distance. Now, this actually doesn't make the ball go that far, so all you might want to do is times it by a number. I'm going to times it by five because that's what I've worked out works quite well in my testing, but you can play around this number and either increase that to make the ball go further 
or decrease it to make the ball go less distance. In terms of the angle, we're going to use the angle formula, and this works exactly the same. It takes in four numbers, and the first one is going to be the pull point X, the pull point Y, and then the ball X and Y. So this works out not only the distance, but this also one works out the angle that we're firing. Final point, we don't need to do anything on. Now, before we actually test this, we can go back to our ball, and we're just going to change a couple of things. So the first thing we're going to change is the collision mask, and we're going to make it a circle. This makes it act like a ball and not a box. Next, what we're going to do is add the bullet option. Now, this doesn't make it behave like a bullet. All it does is it does enhance collision. So when we've got really fast objects, you're going to get it less likely where the ball will clip through a wall. We can now pull back, and if I fire red, I'm able to get it in first try. If I fire something like a green one or an orange, it's going to go a lot shorter of a distant. And again, you can play around with these numbers to get the result that you want. One drawback of this code you'll see is if we're off screen, you'll see that it actually disappears. So what you might want to do is always raise the ball slightly higher so you always get to see that little line, that little point. Finally, for this short demo here, we're going to add a quality of life change. And then I'm going to show you how you can turn this from a platformer style golf game into a top down one. For a quality of life change, all we're going to do is add an event and we're going to take our ball and we want to compare its current velocity. So compare velocity. And we've got the option for X, Y or overall. I'm going to do overall and we're going to check if it is less than five. If it's less than five, what we're going to do is going to take the pull point and we're going to set enabled on the drag and drop and make sure it is enabled. We're then going to click to the side and add an else. And if it's not, we're just going to disable the drag and drop. This means you can't fire it when it's in the air. It's very hard to do while it's in the air anyway because of how fast the ball moves, but this just stops you being able to fire twice in the air. So the ball has to come to almost a stop, not a complete stop, because if not, you might be waiting a bit longer than the player wants to do but when the ball's close to a near stop, you'll be then able to drag and drop and fire again. Now instead I'll show you how to turn this into a top-down version of golf if you don't want the sort of platform style. So for this, what we're going to do is we're just going to add a new event. This is going to be a system, and it's going to be on start of layout. We're just going to add an action to our ball, and there's an option called world of gravity. We're going to change that from 10 to zero. Now before we actually play this, the final thing that we need to do is also adjust some values here. And the big value you want to adjust is the linear dampening. And this just means how quickly the ball slows down. If you don't have this on, your ball will always be moving when there's no gravity to slow it down. And if I pull back a little bit, it'll get knocked around and then it'll eventually come to a stop. Now with the top down one, I do find that you do need to apply less force to it because it does travel a bit further. So that's where the ball stopped. Now it looks like it's still on a platform style scale and that's just weirdly how it stopped. It stopped against the wall. So I do this again, hopefully it's going to stop somewhere else. You'll see it stop near the top now because it hit that wall and that wall will slow it down. So now you can start using this to make your own top down or platform based physics games. So stuff like Angry Birds, stuff like golf, this is really, really perfect for this. If you've enjoyed this video, Feel free to subscribe to the channel where we do more construct tutorials, show off construct projects and even set some challenges once in a while. Like the video, comment down below and I'll see you in the next one.